Hi, my name is Henrik. I'm the creator of Figment Caustix, which is a collection of textures that makes it possible to render animated water caustics in seconds instead of minutes or hours. So one of the questions I get asked a lot is, is it possible to use these textures with this render engine or this 3D software? And my answer is probably, but let me just break it down. There's actually just two things that your render engine and or 3D software needs to be able to do in order for you to get the most out of Figment Caustics. Number one, your render engine needs to either have or support a type of light that has the ability to project a bitmap texture. Number two, your light source should have the ability to create soft shadows while keeping the projected texture sharp because they've already been calculated to look like they're at a certain depth and we want to be able to create shadows that match that depth level. So if your 3D software and render engine ticks off these two boxes, then you should be good to go. But if you're not sure, you can download the free sample from my shop and test out whether it works for your render engine or not. And with that out of the way, I'll just go ahead and quickly demonstrate how these example files are set up using Corona, Arnold, Redshift, and Final Render. And if you're using V-Ray, you can find some more in-depth tutorials on my YouTube channel for that. So here we are in Max with Corona, and this is what it looks like. And I've just added a disc-shaped Corona light um, on top of my scene just to sort of create like a skylight. And this is the light source I'm using to project the caustics. And you'll notice that this is a standard light source in 3ds Max. And you can find that up here. I'm just using a target direct. And the reason I'm using this instead of a Corona light is that while the Corona light gives me the option of projecting a texture, it does not give me the option of controlling the softness of the shadow separately from the texture. In other words, if I put the texture in there and then make soft shadows, the texture will be blurred as well, which is not what I want. But fortunately, Corona has provided a Corona shadow type that you can choose under the shadow tab for the legacy light. And the legacy light types actually also gives you the option of choosing a realistic inverse square decay type if you need that. Um, this is something that in most modern renderers is just on by default. But if you're trying to emulate a sunlight, you probably want to keep this off. And down here you have the option of changing the shape and size of the beam. So if you want it to cover a much larger area, you can do that, or you can change it into the shape of a circle. Um, for this example, I'll just keep it big enough to fill the point of view of the camera. And down here under the Corona Shadows tab, you can enable the soft shadows, which is precisely the reason we chose this type of light. So just enable that. And below here, you can see that I've already plugged in a bitmap for my projector map. And if I just open up the material editor, you can see that I have the bitmap right here. So Corona actually has its own bitmap loader. And the reason I'm not using that for this scene is that it doesn't seem to support the IFL file format, uh, which is what 3ds Max uses whenever you want to plug in a sequence of frames. So if you need the Cortex to be animated, I would just stick with the standard uh, bitmap loader that's native to Max. And inside of that, you have the option to select either the IFL file or just a single texture if you just want it to be a still image. And this is just plugged in there as an instance. And now if you hit render, this is what you get. And it's pretty quick. And right now the shadow is tech sharp. So let's see about softening that up a little bit. So as you can see, we have full control over the softness of the shadow and it doesn't in any way alter the sharpness of the texture that we're projecting, which is ideal. And now all you have to do is adjust the angle of the light to your liking and adjust the tiling for what you might need. And then finally, the softness of the shadow, uh, depending on the depth that you're trying to portray. Okay, and that's all I have for Corona. And this is what it looks like in Arnold.
and I have an orange light here. This is just a sky dome to soften everything up a bit. And up here I have my main projection light, which is also a native Arnold light. Uh, you can find that up here. And I've set the type of this light to be a spot. And just below the light type, you can set the radius of the light, which will control the softness of your shadows. And you can change the cone angle if you want the light to be spread out wider. And down here we have intensity and exposure multiplier and stuff like that. And the way it works in Arnold, if you want to project the texture through the light, you need to apply a gobo filter. And you can find that right up here in the modifier list. And Arnold has its own bitmap loader. It's called Image, uh, and you can find it in here. But I won't be using that. Um, and the reason is that it doesn't support animation. You can select still images, but you can't select IFL files, which is what you need in Max if you want to enable animation. So I'll just be using a standard 3 ds Max bitmap. And for this example, I'll just leave it at one of the JPEG files. But I just wanted you to know that if you do want the Cortex to be animated, then you will have to use the standard bitmap loader instead of the Arnold image loader. And remember, whenever you're using a standard bitmap loader in Max, you need to set the gamma setting when you're loading the texture. So I'll just set that to one. All right, and the final thing to do is just connect the bitmap node over here to the map slot, which is just below the color slot in the Arnold Gobo filter. And then I'll just hit render, and this is what it looks like when you just move the light about. And because this is simply a bitmap being projected through the light, it takes virtually no time to render. And here you can see what happens if I change the radius of the light. Now I get the tech sharp shadows that maybe I do want sometimes, but the important part is that I have control over it. I can soften it up, I can match it up to whatever I need it to be. And right now, because this is a spotlight, uh, you'll notice that the projection is sort of distorted like a cone. If you want it to be a bit more directional like sunlight, what you can do is just move the light farther back. And of course, you can move this as far back as you want. Um, you just might need to up the multiplier of the light source if the light becomes too dim. And because we made the light bigger, we also made the caustics bigger. And the way to fix that is to simply up the tiling value in the bitmap loader. This way you can get the same look of the caustics, but without the cone distortion that you get from the spotlight. So yeah, that's the basic setup for using Figment Caustics with Arnold in 3ds Max. Here we are in Redshift, and for this scene I've used the Redshift bitmap loader, and you can find that in the menus right here. And this fully supports animated bitmaps, just like the native 3ds Max bitmap loader. And up here you can set the tiling for the texture, um, for this example, I'll just leave it at a single JPEG, but if you wanted to enable animation, you have the option of using an IFL file. I'll just set the gamma to 1, and you can further control the gamma inside the bitmap loader. I'll set that to raw, and right down here in the time tab is where you can set the speed of the animation if you had picked an IFL file. And the light source that I'm using to project the caustics is just a redshift physical light set to spot. And this is the intensity multiplier. Um, I've disabled the K because I want it to mimic sunlight. And right next to the color here, you can plug in the caustics texture to have it projected through the light. And right down here in the shadow tab, you have the option to change the softness of the shadow. And you also have this very nice feature where you can link or unlink whether the softness should affect the gobo. And by gobo, we mean the caustic texture that is being projected through the light. So let's just hit render and move the light around. So this is what happens when I change the softness of the shadow. You can make it tech sharp if that's what you want, or you can make it super soft. You have full control over it. And as you can see, it's pretty fast.
and watch what happens when you enable the softness effects gobo. Now the softness or the blurriness of both the shadows and the texture is linked together. So usually I'd want them to be separate, but it's very nice to have the option to link them if you want to. So as you might have noticed, uh, this being a spotlight, you have a bit of a cone distortion happening on your caustic texture. Um, if you want this to look a bit more like sunlight, you want the lines of the light to be more parallel, uh, to be more directional. And the way to fix this is just to move the light farther back. And because we don't have any decay enabled for this light, the intensity of the light should remain the same, regardless of where it's placed. But we do want to go in and then adjust the tiling of the texture to get the look that we want. And because we move the light, we might also need to change the softness of the shadow again. So I'll just bump that up a bit until I get the look that I want. And that's how you use Figment Caustics with Redshift. So here we are in Final Render, and I have two light sources in here. Uh, one of them is just a Final Render area light, just to soften up everything in the scene. And the other light is a standard spotlight. And you can find that right up here. And just at the top here, I have selected Final Render Area Shadows as the shadow type. And further down, if you need to, you can select the shape of the light from a rectangle to a circle, or you can, or you can change the hotspot beam or the throw angle of the spotlight. And down here, we have the Final Render Area Shadows tab where you can change the radius of the light, which will control the softness of the shadows. And for the bitmap loader, I'm just using the standard 3ds Max bitmap. And you can find that in the menus right here. So for this example, I'll just be using a single still image, but if you want to, you can enable sequence or select the IFL file if you already have one and set the gamma override to one. And up here, you can control the tiling of the texture. And below here in the time tab, if you did select an IFL file, you can control the playback speed of the animation. Now, all I need to do is just plug the map into the projector map slot under advanced effects. And this is what it looks like when I move the light about. And as you might have noticed, because I'm using a spotlight, we have a bit of a cone-shaped distortion going on with the caustics. Um, you can fix that by moving the light farther away. But once we do that, we do have to change the tiling number for the texture. So it looks the same as it did before. And if we go back to the final render area shadows, you can change the radius of the shadow to make it sharp, make it soft, tweak it to the look that you're after. And that's how you use Figment Caustics with final render for 3ds Max. Okay, that's all I have for this short tutorial. I hope you found it useful. And remember, if you're using a render engine that I didn't cover in this video, you can download the free sample from my shop and test out whether it works for your render engine or not. And if you do test it with a render engine that I did not cover and it works, then please let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear if more people are able to use my textures. All right, that's it for me. Thanks for watching.